so gross. Like a kid with new skis 
Like beads on a silken bead, on a silken bead, on a silken string. jet lag for two weeks and this weird surreal thing going on. And anyway, I, I wrote this song called Pulse about that. Sixty miles, I can't reconcile it. 
frustrated and so alienated from your art that you just like want to tear the paper in half or you know what have you. But then I got started thinking about self-destructive behavior in general and the people who pull us back from dangerous press places. And I wrote this song. We went 
cry and cry and say it wasn't my fault There was this dragon inside making me do wrong And I look back now to see what has changed And remark instead of all that Stay the same, we sit high on horses and hold tight the reins Praying a bit in the mouths what makes the beast tame them sharps and flats. It's kind of like a piano without the black case. So if you want those inner notes, you have to move these things. So this is my C, my C sharp. Um, but just thought I'd fill you in. And then people watch that and they're like, what? <laughs> um, so I'm going to play a lighter song now. Um, it's an old one. I wrote this when I was in high school. and uh, It's about those... Um, you know, those kind of fluffy relationships that aren't of much substance, but really fun. Um, used to be called Milkshake, this song, but then there was that hit. And, uh, <laughs> and that was kind of misleading, so it's now called Empty Cars. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
more into, you know, folklore and Celtic mythology and that sort of thing. But there's this really famous child's ballad called Tamlin, and famous in that world. <laughs> but, um, you know, if you're, if you're interested in that sort of thing, feel free to Google it. There's a ton of stuff out there on it. But um, this song is called Tamlin, and uh, I sort of used that uh, fairy tale, folklore, whatever, um, as a springboard for this modernization. In the story, uh, Tamlin is this um, character who is uh, captured by Queen Mab, Queen of Fairies, and um, made sort of her slave. And uh, she's going to sacrifice him to, I don't really remember what, but at Halloween, he's going to be sacrificed. And so his lover, Janet, and he actually like raped, it's kind of, you know, kind of like they are fairy tales in medieval times, they're just a little twisted, but um, Janet has to save him, and the way she does that is she, uh, she has to hold on to him while Queen Mab turns him into like a lion and a serpent, and then finally, um, and all these awful things, and then finally a, uh, a red hot coal that she has to hold on to. She's burning, and uh, then she can keep him for her own. But um, anyway, I took that story and I kind of swapped Queen Mab, the person, for sort of addiction in general, and uh, came up with this song. So, Hamlet. <laughs> Thank you. 
So I wrote um, this song that's been at, you know, about three years in the making. But, um, when I graduated from high school, I, I took off the air and I worked as a nanny for this family. Uh, these two beautiful, wonderful girls um, whose father was an officer in Iraq. And uh, I was sort of afforded through that really uh, intimate and uh, privileged perspective on that, how that sort of um, situation affects the family dynamic. And uh, that's when I first started thinking about this song. And uh, I didn't think I, I was ready to write it. I didn't think I was qualified, you know. Protest songs are so whiny and dull and boring, and you know, I didn't want to be any of those things. And I, I so wanted to get it right, you know, I just didn't think I was there yet. So I forgot about it for a while until there was Hurricane Katrina. And I read this article in the New York Times that was talking about um, the, the latent racial tensions that uh, the you know, aftermath of the hurricane had sort of brought to the forefront of the uh, American perspective once again. And the uh, journalist recounted. Um, a really shameful and horrible piece of American history uh, in a similar flood in the Mississippi in, uh, I think it was like 1937 or 1937. But um, rescue boats went out to go save uh, you know, people who were stranded, and um, they passed an entire um, community of African Americans. And uh, not only did they leave them to drown, but they sang uh, from their stern in a very spiteful, cruel way. Um, this hit song of the day, Bye Bye Blackbird, as they were pulling away. It was just, it horrified me, and um, that was the second time I thought about writing this song. <laughs> and again, decided I wasn't ready. And then I was, I was putting together um, pieces for this record, and I, I decided it was high time I sat down and got over it and uh, tried to write a, a political song that wasn't pointing fingers, um, but just to uh, try and uh, you know, bear witness to uh, a lot of the unsung experiences of many people in this country. So, this is Sweet Matata. Food tastes like rust sucked inside your mouth. Sweet, sound like you can't spit it out. We just can't plan for this kind of thing. But what were we expecting? We can't stay, can't leave, can't force the thing. We can't make our gods do anything. Men stand like tall white stones land in a thousand tiny ropes. See, we dwell in a house of Cedar, no fear here, no love either. But there's a woman sitting there on a whole kitchen chair, scared to death of the knock on her doorway. Don't let them be gone. I can't do this alone. Got three kids, got a family. Oh.
so um, I think I'm going to play one more of my songs, and then I'm going to play um, some Irish stuff, because I've got this really cool Celtic band coming on. Um, but this, uh, this is a song I wrote when I was like 17, and it was my first sort of experience of, you know, going out with someone and having a great time and sort of hanging out for a while and then like having that person totally fall off the face of the planet. And uh, that's like really normal, I, I've learned since. But at the time I was like, oh my god, this is unbelievable. And I was really angry when I wrote this song. Um, Mr. Houdini, uh, in the end it turns out that he had moved to Canada, actually. Uh, <laughs> he did call me back, but, uh, but not until I'd had time to, to get this off my chest. So. <laughs> this is Mr. Houdini. Hi. 
So I'm going to take just a quick moment and draw your attention to the fact that there are two CDs on the back table there. One of them is my old EP, and one of them is my brand new Spankin' album. And uh, the new one is $15, the old one is $10, or you can buy them both for $20. Uh, there are also tons of heart power stickers, stickers in a hot pink that are free, so help yourselves. Uh, and I'm one, so by all means, go crazy. Um, this is a, a, a an Irish song, and it's not actually traditional. There is someone who's credited with writing it, but I don't remember the name. Um, it's <laughs> it's called uh, Winter Fire and Snow, and um, it's sort of a is spoken from a <laughs> it's really great back there. I kind of wish I was part of it. Um, it's spoken from the perspective of a father who's uh, <laughs> whose son's gone off to carnival in the dead of winter, you know, to go have fun, and uh, it's dark now and he's getting worried. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Um, so this is winter fire and snow. I hope it's as fun as that child thinks it will be. <laughs> Two are instrumentals. The um, first song I'm going to play with you is an Irish slip drink. It's called Butterfly. It's one of my favorites. Um, you may have heard it. It's like a lot of lots of movie soundtracks, like Super Bowl and stuff. It may not be totally foreign to you. Um, 
slip jigs, of course, being superior to normal jigs because they're in nine eighths or six eighths, so they slow the numbers. You know, but it does it in there, which is cool if you're into music meters. Um, <laughs> and then I'm going to play you uh, a little bit of um, a song by Turlock O'Callaghan, who's uh, arguably one of the most famous harpists of all time. He was in the uh, 18th century, and uh, he was blinded by smallpox at the age of 18, and someone gave him a harp so that he could uh, earn a living, and um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and um, anyway, he, uh, he is credited with over 300 melodies, um, which is kind of remarkable coming from the 1700s. Uh, but this one is called Ellen Plunkett, and then I'm going to go into a song uh, that was popularized by uh, Lorena McKennett, who's a wonderful harpist singer songwriter from Canada. And uh, it's called Barney Portmore, and it's, uh, it's one of my favorite songs. It's kind of like a the old, old, old school tree hugger song. Um, it's uh, it's about uh, lamenting. It's a love song for the uh, the old wood forests of Ireland that were uh, largely destroyed to create the British Navy. So um, yeah, <clears throat> I'm about a fun to start. Thank you. 
break the 